my um, boyfriend at the time had to call 911 because he thought I was having a stroke um, because I lost movement of my face and my arms. Um, and I just could not um, like control my body. I couldn't talk. Um, and it was again, I knew it was somehow related to my drinking, but I wasn't ready to admit it at this point. Um, and I, that was the first time I'd ever gone to the hospital for a panic attack. And I had to go to the hospital. I explained what happened. Um, and this is my first time in a hospital since I gave birth to my son. So there's nothing really on record for, you know, who Nicole Marceau is. Um, and so, you know, they asked me if I drank and I was like, eh, here and there, you know, um, and they asked me if I use recreational drugs, which I don't, and I never did. So, um, you know, I said no there. And that's one thing is, um, a lot of people say, you know, there's like these drug addicts and then there's alcoholics. Alcohol is a drug. It poisons your body and that's why your body reacts the way it does. And, but for a really long time, I thought, well, you know, even if I drink a lot, at least I'm not a drug addict, but like realistically, I was, and, you know, yeah. I was addicted to something that was hurting my body. Um, but um, in the hospital, you know, they asked me if I drank and I lied and it was the first time they'd really seen me. So why would I lie about it? They thought, you know, um, wow. maybe I was just experiencing a panic attack because I'm a mom of two young kids. Who knows? You know, so they treated me for my panic attack and they sent me home and they recommended that I should be in therapy. Um, and I'd already been in therapy. I put myself in therapy actually after I got fired from my bartending job, because that was when I started working on getting sober. But um, I was just trying to get sober by myself, which if you're an alcoholic, it's literally impossible to get sober by yourself. Um, so, you know, I was um, in the therapy and I didn't want to quit drinking, so I didn't want to admit that these panic attacks and this anxiety was coming from my drinking, so I continued to drink the wow. way that I always had. Wow. And then, you know, the world shut down on March 17th of 2020. I lost my job, and my kids got pulled out of school. And so then I was like, well, I'm for sure not going to quit drinking if the world's going to end. Like, I don't want <laughs> to over for that. And so I didn't quit drinking. And I was like, you know, maybe when COVID's over, maybe I'll, you know, look at it again then. And, you know, and then the panic attacks got really serious. I was going to the hospital sometimes two to three times a week because I um, would have a panic attack. And um, at this point, my boyfriend was over it. He was so annoyed with um, how my anxiety was affecting me. And um, he, you know, he just wanted me to go away with it. And um, I think at that point, we both knew it was my drinking. And at that point, I started to really take the idea of getting sober a little bit more seriously. So when I'd go to the hospital, I'd be a little bit more honest, you know, about my drinking and, but never all the way honest, just, you know, tell them a little bit more. And then, you know, you know I, drink. I drink a little bit, you know? Yeah. I drink a little bit. I drink every once in a while, but it's COVID everybody's drinking, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so then, um, but I would be honest about it and more honest, you know, and they'd just treat me for my panic attack and send me home. Wow. And that was my body's way of telling me that something was wrong and I was not listening to it. And when your body doesn't, when you don't listen to your body, your body will freak out. It will get your attention. And that's what I was doing with panic attacks. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And then, um, I ended up in the hospital. Um, so I, on August 25th of 2020, a really good friend of mine passed away from cancer. And that was actually when, that was the last day that I ever drank was August 25th of 2020. Um, and I went to that bar that I worked at um, mm -hmm. and she was, she was a coworker there. And so that's where I saw mm -hmm. my previous bosses and I drank with them and at that bar and there, but all, our friend had just died. So it wasn't weird that everyone was drinking. Right, blood. of course. And, and they hadn't seen me in months. Um, so none of it was weird. And then the next day, um, I had a panic attack, a really bad panic attack. Wow. And my kids weren't in school and I literally could not catch a break. And then um, my ex came home from work completely wasted and it scared me. 
Um, and that was for some reason, that was when I knew that if I wasn't going to get out of the situation, something really bad was going to happen. Yeah. And so I called my mom and, um, I asked her if the kids and I could come over to her house and I went to her house and I had a panic attack that night and she sent me to the hospital cause she didn't know what to do. Um, my mom knew I was an alcoholic at this point. Um, and, uh, she was very open about how unhappy she was that I was an alcoholic because my father is an alcoholic and my father left when I was really, really little. Um, and so she had to raise me all by herself, you know, and it was, I think, very sad to see her daughter following in those footsteps, but she sent me to the hospital. And at this point I hadn't drank in almost 24 hours because I was having panic attacks and I, um, couldn't keep food down or even alcohol down. So I was sober, but not by choice. Um, and then the hospital treated my panic attack and they sent me home and about nine o'clock the next morning, um, I woke up and I looked at my mom and I said, I need to go back to the hospital. And she's like, are you having another panic attack? And I was like, no, but something is wrong and I can feel it. And so at this point she's like, well, I'll keep the kids, you know, go do what you need to do. Um, and that was when they found my pancreatitis was when I went to the hospital that next morning. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, first of all, thank you for, for sharing the story and, uh, even, I mean, obviously that's part of thanking you for being on the show anyways, but (laughs) I just, uh, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it, it definitely takes some strength to be able to share this story, but I think you're, you're the kind of person who wanted to share this story. Uh, as as evident by uh, you being here but also by you know what I saw on Facebook so yeah I'm I'm glad that we're doing it now yeah um one of the things I remember you mentioned in the video was that you know you you have this pancreatitis and this idea okay I want to be sober now and I think this was the first time where you went there and they said you're you're you have pancreatitis and you're like I'm an alcoholic. This is like the first time you were like, yeah, I got a problem. Um, And you mentioned in the video also, and I'll I'll, I'll let you go, but uh, you also mentioned it was easy to stay sober in the hospital Mm -hmm. and then much harder when you got out. Yeah. Um, So what happened when I um, was in the hospital and the only way that I can explain what I was going through um, was it felt like childbirth and I was Mm. not pregnant. And so the Mm. doctor was like, and so when I told the doctor that, that's when they ran um, these tests and I um, had to go um, and get a CAT scan and an MRI. Mm. And that's when it came back with my pancreatitis. And the doctor actually called me, excuse my language, but on my bullshit, because he said, how often do you drink? And then I said, oh, you know, I have wine when I cook dinner. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, bullshit. And I was like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> and he was like, you're 29 years old and you have pancreatitis. 29 year olds don't get pancreatitis. You drink every day. And that's when I was like, I drink vodka, I drink wine. I'm so sorry I lied to you. And he was like, this is why you're having panic attacks. This is why you have pancreatitis. This is why you have fatty liver. And he looked at me and he obviously could tell that even though I had messed up all these things in my life with my drinking, the only thing I cared about was my kids. He could somehow tell that. And he looked at me in my eyes and he said, Nicole, you can tell me the truth or you don't have to tell me the truth. But if you continue to drink the way that you're drinking, you're not going to see your kids graduate high school. And that was enough for me. And he said, do you want help getting sober? And I said, yes, before I could think, before I could, it just, the word yes came out of my mouth. And he said, okay, you need to call whoever has your kids and let them know that you are not getting out of the hospital anytime soon. You are going to stay in this hospital until I tell you, you can leave. And, um, you know, being sober in the hospital is super easy because you cannot get alcohol in a hospital. (laughs) Um, So I had, you know, no choice, but I also had the most amazing people um, around me to support me in the hospital. These complete strangers of doctors and nurses in the middle of COVID, I might add, you know, that are, this is 
a hard time for people in hospitals and they're helping this 29 year old drunk. And, you know, that is one of those things where you, I can never be more grateful. There's absolutely, because they could have easily said, um, hello lady, get your drinking together. There are people with COVID you need, like, we don't have time for you, but they saw that I needed it and that I wanted it. And I'm sure they saw how many times I'd been to the hospital in the past couple of months. And we're like, this girl's going to just keep coming back and we don't do something about it. And so, um, the doctor looked at me and he said, I'm going to admit you and I'm going to treat you for your pancreatitis in the hospital. And obviously while we're treating you for your pancreatitis, you're going to be getting sober. And he said, but you cannot leave until I tell you, you can leave. And so I texted my mom and I said, um, can you keep the kids for a few days? I'm going to stay in the hospital. And she was like, why what's wrong? (laughs) And I'm like, I'm going to get sober. And she said, okay, take your time. Take all the time you need. I have the kids. You do you just focus on you. And so, yeah, I was admitted into the hospital. Um, and what a lot of people don't know is when you first said, you know, get admitted to the hospital for, um, also for pancreatitis and alcohol withdrawal, you don't get to eat food for 24 hours and that's not fun, <laughs> but you, you know, it's a part of your body, um, how your body heals is your body has to go through fasting. Um, mm. and alcohol had been so hard on every part of my body wow. that my body really needed to heal. And so they admitted me and the people at the hospital were, the most amazing people. Nobody treated me like I was a drunk that didn't have my life together. Nobody treated me like, um, you know, cause a lot of people, when you get sober in the hospital, if you don't go into a program right after that, a lot of people will go to the liquor store on the way home from the hospital. 